What's going on, guys? I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesday, where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better warrior. Today, we're going to be talking about the top five ways to tell if somebody's a complete noob uh, as far as citizen soldiers, militia units, anything where you're <laughs> um, doing some paramilitary training or you're out there and trying to figure out if somebody knows what the hell's going on, knows what they're doing, or if they might get you and your in your unit actually killed. Uh, this is a serious topic. I'm putting it out there. I think we all know that um, it's a very interesting topic. Not a lot of people really are kind of into the whole American militia scene, right? Like there's um there's a lot of there's a lot of different very good good units out there. Um you know, Michigan and guys like that who are very respected. Um and then there's some other fringe ones. We're not discussing the fringe ones. I never endorse doing anything illegal. This is just for entertainment purposes, but we're talking about when, you know, you go to a place like one shepherd and um you're you're sitting there and you're training and you're talking to guys sometimes it's difficult to tell especially if you don't have a lot of experience because from my from what i've seen a lot of guys will you know they'll they'll act big and bad right and they'll act like they know what the fuck's going on and they you know they've got some fancy gear and they might tell you to like hey square that away over there and like do this but they've never been to a semester before and they don't have prior military experience so they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's important that you're able to recognize these people, especially if you are actually um, maybe you're a paramilitary contractor, right? And you're going to get ready to go and do some overseas protection work or something like that. But, you know, people slip through the cracks every now and again. Uh, I know during um, the first couple of years of the Iraq war, lots of people were slipping through the cracks. I heard uh, lots of stories from James Yeager about just guys that should never have been over there and they were a liability to the uh to the teams so we're gonna break down the top five ways that i personally have seen um that you will immediately be able to recognize somebody is dangerous and that way you can pass that up your chain of command and uh <laughs> at the very least at the very least uh, know yourself that that person is incredibly dangerous why are these people dangerous before we get into this why are these people dangerous they don't know what the fuck is going on they're going to act like they know what the hell is going on, but they don't. And they're going to even think that they know what they're doing because they've played enough Call of Duty or they've watched YouTube videos or they're just delusional. I don't know why these people act the way that they do. But very quickly, you will see that they make rookie mistakes. And when you make rookie mistakes in a combat situation, break it down for you. I've not been in actual like combat okay i've done a lot of one shepherd semesters i'm going to be doing my fifth and no sixth and final semester coming up and uh i've done a lot of other supplemental field uh field training exercises and stuff like that so got a little bit of experience here and i'd like to think i know a little bit about what i'm talking about but what i've seen these guys they'll make rookie mistakes that it's like why are you doing that that's extremely dangerous to everybody else right you're going to get us detected you're going to get us in trouble you're you're putting too much anyway we'll get into it okay but it is really really important forgive these lights over here they're like i feel like i got angels shining down upon me which is not a bad thing these guys are really dangerous and i want you to be able to recognize them so, so let's jump into it all right so way number one that i have seen people act when they want everyone to kind of think that they're like a seasoned veteran so to speak but they're a rookie right they're obsessed with gear like they, it's all about the gear. They, they have like a lot of gear and they know a lot about different gear and, uh, they, they'll comment on everybody else's stuff and they'll say, Oh, is that the new, you know, XP 41? Like, and I'm not a gearhead, so I don't, I don't know about this stuff. I just know how to fight. I don't know about all the different names of gear and everything, but when I see people and they're like going around the barracks and they're going around the tent, the GPU tent or whatever, and Oh, is that the new now 55 lumen flashlight whatever like whatever like it, i know right away like either they just have a very a big passion for this stuff or they're definitely new because it's all about to them it's all about the gear and it's not about the tactics they're not sitting down and discussing 
hey, you know, what is what is the best way to organize our our fire team here? What is what do you guys think the best strategy is going to be, you know, for for the FTX coming up? Like what what do you think is the best way for me to, you know, fold this shit so I can fit the most in my pack without making it too head like practical stuff, right? They're not sitting down with the more experienced guys who have been there before and saying like, you know, um, I think when we do our fire team rush, you know, maybe, maybe if we organize it like this, this could blah, 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 right? Like they're not talking tactics. They're not talking anything practical. They're talking about gear, which is like, okay, I get it. Like people like that stuff, but it really is a tool to accomplish the mission. Like that's all it is. And just because something costs more and just because it's nicer doesn't mean it's better. Uh, I have been using, I literally upgraded my Hellas kit like last year. And I've been doing this for like seven or eight years. My Alice kit that I have had was spectacular. It did everything I needed it to do. And then some, it was light and it was an old like freaking 1980s Alice shit. Like and the shit was falling apart. So I had to replace it. But like, you see guys coming in and they've got like, <laughs> they've got a plate carrier and they've got their like freaking plates in it and stuff. And it's like, well, dude, we're, that's cool and everything, but like, you're going to get very tired, man. We're moving a lot of distance fast. And like, I get it. Like, but I, I, I don't know, man, like maybe take some of that shit off there and, and run it just slick, you know, because you're going to be snagging on the, they get really obsessed with gear, but again, they don't necessarily know the practical side of things. So that's number one, right? I've Generally, I've seen guys who have been doing it again and again. They will have a squared away kit. They will have like decent or good gear on them, but they just, they don't get too excited about it, right? It's like, this is my kit. This is my, this is my deuce gear. Um, it is what it is. I mean, you, you got some, some ideas. If you're an experienced guy, how I can improve it. Cool. I'll listen, but like, I'm not going to sit there with you all night and talk about the new pouch from Condor tactical or whatever. It's just, and some guys are like that. Some, some experienced guys really love it, which is cool. But like, generally speaking, you settle down about that stuff after a while doing this. All right. Number two, um, they know everything. Like they want you to know that they know everything, right? Um, they'll know a lot about rifles. They'll know a lot about the different parts of the rifles. They'll know a lot about a lot of stuff. But again, you don't hear them talking about much practical things. They'll know a lot about the gear. They'll know a lot about the weapons, but they, they don't know as much about how to put everything together, move with it as a team, right? Like you don't hear them talking about, well, when we retrograde, you know, if we do it like this, I think it would actually be better because of reason A, B, and C. Um, again, they're not talking tactics. They're not talking uh, strategy. They're not talking anything really practical. Uh, they, they're mostly talking. They're no, they know everything about, you know, gear and weapons. And uh, usually it's about gear and weapons. Uh, you know, usually it's it's that. Um, and then usually they'll they'll act like superior to a lot of people. Uh, like if they find out somebody else is new, they'll then act superior to that other new guy. If the guy doesn't know everything about like the AR-15, he'll be like, oh, like, you know, trust me, I've been, I've been doing this a while. You just do it like this, man. You just do it like this. Just do it like this. And like, typically, like from what I've seen again, like once you get more and more experience, you're never, you, you always want to give the new guys a piece of advice here or there, but you never care enough to like tell them all about everything, how to do things, right? You just, you let them figure it out. You know that like when you went, came in and you were fresh and you were new, like it took a while for you to figure everything out. You've got to learn a lot of the stuff like on your own, kind of the hard way, right? So like if you see them doing something stupid or like potentially dangerous or something that would potentially get in the way of operations, you will speak up and you'll say like, Hey man, like, you know, dude, like, just don't worry about that. Don't do that. Like just, you know, do this instead or, or, Hey dude, take this off your kit, man. That's stupid. Like let's, let's square you away here. Or, Hey man, you're going to get really tired. If you, if you do that, like do, do this instead, like you'll give them advice about things, but you, it's going to be a piece of here, whoa, a piece of advice here, a piece of advice there. 
it, it's never going to be like picking out people and being like trying to be their daddy. Right. It's like, that's, that's just, I've seen a lot of new guys do that when they want to like, I don't know what they're, I don't know. It's like a gun culture thing. I think like some, a lot of gun guys are like this, where they have this like nerd superiority complex to other people. And they're like, Oh, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, let me tell you everything I know. Like, you don't need to tell everyone everything you know. If you know something, just keep it to yourself. Like, let them figure it out for themselves because they need to. And that's how you grow as a warrior and an individual. You make stupid mistakes. Like, you put too much shit in your pack. And then the next time you're like, well, fuck, I'm not doing that again. I was like ragged the next, you know, after that. Which brings me to my next uh, thing that I see is way too much fucking gear. Like, too much shit in their pack just packing all kinds of useless shit that like we won't need. And it tells me right away that you've never done this before. Like when experienced people load their pack to go on an FTX or go on a mission or whatever, um, it's very bare bones, right? It's like a sleep sleeping bag, depending on what season it is, like some kind of sleep system. If that, uh, if it's just like a 72 hour thing, maybe even just like a whoopee or something, um, They'll have a poncho or some some kind of ring gear in there. They'll have their MREs, extra ammunition, um, maybe a cleaning kit for their rifle, like maybe a, he a headlamp or a flashlight with a red lens, like just, just very basic, basic stuff. And I'm leaving a few things out, but like you get the point. Just very light, very basic, only the fucking things that you'll know you're really going to need. Everything else, like we'll make do without it for 72 hours. Like if we need to, right. Um, and if we're going for longer than that, well then the pack's going to need to be bigger, but it's still not going to be, you don't want to put anything in there that you don't need or that you, you know, you're not going to need or that you think you might not need, right? Like put a shit kit in there with like some hand sanitizer, toilet paper, a small shovel or whatever. Um, again, that, that's the mark of professional, somebody who's done it a bunch, somebody who's moved a lot with a pack, you know, at fast pace, long distances, the pack's going to be light and uh, it's it's not going to be all this shit like a freaking saw and a freaking, you know, like a Tinder kit and a freaking this and a freaking that and a 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 that. Like, we don't need all that stuff. Like, anything we really need, we'll put it on the list before we move out. Um, before we step off, we'll like go through like what everyone's supposed to have. We'll break all the gear up amongst all of the fire team. We'll make sure that everyone's carrying equal weight. Like we will requisition from, you know, over there in the supply house, like everything we need and nothing more. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Like take what you're going to need for your like survival and somewhat physical comfort and not more. And when you see guys just packing a bunch of shit in their bag, you, you know, right away, like, no, another thing, like I said about the gear, man, like they, they got all kinds of shit on their gear. They got like, plate carrier with a backpack on it and a freaking like heavy plates and like all these mag and like all this shit like everywhere it's like dude like you're gonna need some ammo pouches some canteens or a camelback like a butt a butt um what is it butt pack if you're running like something like that um not 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 too too much else man like you, you know you're gonna need your fighting kit is should be light because you're going to be moving a lot with it and it's going to get heavy. It's going to hurt your back. Your shoulders are going to start hurting. So when you see a guy with like all this shit on it, and I try to tell some of the new guys sometimes like, dude, like leave most of that here. We don't need it. Just like, you're not doing CQB dude. Like it's, we're going out there in the woods for days. Like you don't, you don't want that for the recce shit. Trust me. Oh no, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. All right. Well then, <laughs> You're going to carry it the whole way. You're not like taking your stuff off and leaving it else all over the place so that, you know, they can track us, right? Like that you're, you're going to be carrying this the whole time. And if you get tired, I don't care. You're going to perform just like everybody else is. And if you quit or if you like get too tired to, to do your job, well, I'm going to like really be upset and I'm going to make a mental note that you're not, you're not a capable warrior and I don't want you on my team if I can avoid it. And, you know, if I, if I have to have you on my team, I am going to, I'm going to duly note that I need to like get rid of you somehow and not put you on anything crucial. Um, another way, number four is I see them and they have really nice stuff and it's not used like they're, they're 
they're well, number one, their BDUs are not faded at all. They're like brand new. Like, all right, cool. Like whatever. Like that's maybe it's you bought new ones, like whatever. Um, they've got like new bags and new uh, whatever web gear, plate carriers, whatever, you know, like all this nice new stuff, nice, like expensive shit. They like spent a lot of their paycheck on it. Um, which, you know, you got to give the guys this, right? Is these are citizen soldiers. They're not getting a stipend for this. They're not getting issued this stuff. Like they're spending their own money on these, this equipment. But that's worth something, right? It means they're dedicated, but it's not used. You can just tell, like they've never really fiddled with it before. And that's fine. That's why you come to train is because you find out what works, what doesn't work, what you need to put up on eBay to sell and you maybe you get this and then you're ah oh, that doesn't really I don't like that I'll sell that and I'll buy this and whatever. Eventually you get like a very simplified system set up where it's like I really don't need any of this. Let me just let me just do like basic basic stuff works the best. But that's another thing is like they've got nice new stuff. It's just not used at all, and you can tell it's like brand new, crisp, like whatever. The fifth and final way that I can always tell that somebody's uh not used to this is they're out of shape. They're, they're plain and simple. They are out of shape. There's a difference between somebody who's been in shape or maybe they work a sedentary job and they are, for whatever reason, too lazy to, I'm just going to be honest, they're too lazy to like stay in good shape. And they come out here and they do everything well and they put their all into it. And like, they got, they've got decent cardio because they know enough to take it seriously that like, yes, like I need to get on the stepper machine or like, go for a run every now and again, especially before I go to training, like I need to take it somewhat seriously. And then there's people who are just like fucking fat. They're fucking out of shape. Like they've never done this before. They don't know what it really is like. They know what it's like to play call of duty. They know what it's like to, to watch, you know, teams dropping in on helicopters and doing CQB. And they think, Oh, that's, that's what I want to do. Like Real, real, real combat or, you know, real combat training is not, is not like that. Um, it's fast paced. You move a lot. You're ingesting less calories than you burn, less calories than you burn. Yeah, I think so. Right. Um, you're sore all the fucking time. Like you're, you're, you're just, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down, you're fucking running, you're, you're hiking, you're not sleeping much. Like it fucking sucks. And so you can definitely tell somebody who's newer to this because once they get a couple of couple of times coming out, they're like, oh, shit, I, I can't continue to do this. I need to get in shape. And you'll see them as they progress through the program like One Shepherd or other programs. You'll see them every time you see them, whether that's once a year, twice a year, whatever. They, they kind of if they're taking it seriously, they get in progressively kind of a little bit better shape every single time. So if you're if you're out of shape, um, get into shape. Because you're a liability to your team, to your unit, whatever it is. Uh, if you are, if you don't have good cardio, you can't lift heavy things. Like you are a liability, so it's dangerous not only to you but also to the lives of your fellow soldiers. Uh, so please get into shape before you go to a program. Start getting into shape. Don't like think that the program is going to get you into shape. I'm going to make fun of you if you're not in a baseline amount of physical condition you know if we're going out there and we put our packs on and we move for a mile and you cannot like you physically have to take a break and you make everybody literally like take a break for you that is absolutely poor that is that is that is poor form um you need to be in very good physical cardio condition you need to be able to move with the team Period, period, period. I mean, even I've seen guys come out and like they've got terrible fucking like jock itch going or like uh, what's the other thing where you chub rub or like whatever. And they just they move with the team. They fucking hate every second of it. It's miserable. I remember being out there one week and my ankle was fucked from jujitsu, but like I, I had to just move with the team. I wasn't going to be the one to slow anybody else down or make anybody else stop on my account. Everybody notices that. Okay. You might get once or twice where guys are like, okay, fine. We'll stop if you really need to. Like, we'll take five minutes, maybe if we can, but don't fucking do it again. Um, and that's that's it. So those are the top five ways that I've seen people. 
I'm immediately able to, to tell that people just don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they're trying to fake it. Don't do that. If you're new, admit it. I don't know anything about this stuff. I know very little about this stuff. I'm here to learn. I'm here to be receptive to what you older, experienced, more experienced guys want to tell me. It doesn't have to be older, but I'm here to, I'm here to learn. So I'm not going to listen to like the new guys. They, they also don't know what's going on. They might think they do, but they don't. I'm going to listen to the guys that are in the leadership roles and I'm going to learn from what they have to say. And generally the guys that you really want to learn from are the guys that are more relaxed about it. They won't give you a lot of advice at once, but they'll say, Hey dude, like do this. Hey dude, lose that. Hey dude, like, trust me, if you do it this way, it works better. Those are the guys you want to listen to. Somebody who's not trying to like bark at you. Somebody who's not trying to like teach you everything they know. Because those guys are like compensating for something. I don't know what necessarily, but they're compensating for something. Don't give them your time. If you need to just, all right, man. Okay. 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 Thank you. Like I'll, I'll try harder next time. Thank you. And try to get them off your back and try to learn from the, the more experienced guys that are just going to be more mellow with you and say, all right, man, it's fine. Like I get it. You admit you're, you're new. Uh, cool. Like I, I appreciate the the humbleness, the hum, humble ability, humbleness, whatever. Like let's teach you. And as we go through these training maneuvers, I will teach you um, what you need to know and not anything else. So let me just recap real quick with my old right in the rain trusty notepad here. Uh, that's another thing you can tell a guy's been doing it for a while. They always carry a couple of different things. Number one, a pen. Number two, a notepad. Number three, a wristwatch. If you see a guy with all three of those things, every time you're being given information, brings his notepad, his pen out and writes things down, you can be fairly certain that that is a guy that you want to listen to. Number one, they're obsessed with gear. They talk all about it. They're, they're, they're crazy about their gear, but they don't know a lot about, they're not talking a lot about tactics and stuff like that. They're more concerned with the physical items. Number two, they, they try to act like they know everything. If, if they do know a lot about, you know, hey, listen, if we do this, if we do that, if we do this, um, if we move like this with teams of two here and teams of two here, we can outflank them here this way. All right, I'd start listening to that guy. He knows what he's talking about tactically. At least he sounds like he does. But if a guy just is like trying to bark orders at you, but it's about stupid, hey, don't do your, like really start thinking, okay, Will said a lot of these guys who are more experienced will let the newer guys figure shit out on their own rather than micromanaging. That is, again, that is something we learn in leadership schools like One Shepherd. Leaders don't micromanage. Um, number three, they have way too much shit with them. They pack way too much shit uh, in their backpack or their, their pack. They put way too much shit on their person. They just They have too much shit. The bare bones guys... With the freaking notepad, the pen, and the watch are the guys that you want to really like try to learn from. Uh, nice stuff, but it's not used. I would be diligent uh, to wonder why their stuff is not used. And then if they're out of shape, I don't generally respect anybody who's out of shape, period. Um, I work very, very, very hard to maintain a level of operational readiness. And when I say I work very hard... I suffer at cardio in the mornings. Um, I lift weights about four or five times a week. Um, I train MMA like at least four times a week and wrestling. Um, and I maintain a pretty strict diet most of the year. I suffer a lot. And so when I see people who are not in physical shape, I know that even if they did a quarter of that, they would be a lot better off. And so I don't, I don't respect people who are that lazy that they just can't get out there and do 50 pushups every day and some sit-ups and do a little bit of cardio. It's very baseline, very basic. Uh, but if you can't do that, maybe you don't want to do this stuff. Maybe you're better off. Yeah, listen, there is a, there is a position and a role for every warrior. I'm not saying you're not a warrior, but I'm saying maybe leave the physical stuff to the guys who can do that and who have the motivation to do that. And don't mind putting ourselves physically in like harm's way and suffering. Maybe you're better off behind a computer. You know, maybe you're better off creating area maps for guys or gathering intelligence on a ham radio or other things like that. Right. 
going out to the bar and meeting people who have certain positions and then getting information and relaying it to the guys who are going to go out there and do things. Like there's many different roles. Maybe you like, you love gear and you don't like to do push ups, So you work in the supply hat, but you know, and you, you give us our stuff and you keep a nice little notebook of everything that was given out, the, all the serial numbers and everything. That's a good position for you. Maybe you like to cook. You can cook for us. That's cool. But like, if you are going to be going out there and doing dangerous shit with dangerous men, you better be a dangerous man and you better fucking train hard. Better no hand to hand combat. You better fucking be able to do at minimum 50 push ups. You better be able to fucking run. Like, you better be able to do all this shit because if you're not, you're putting everybody in danger. And in a real situation, um, <laughs> you know, if it's either, if it's either you or the team, guess what? It's not going to be the team. Um, so keep that in mind. And I'm I'm speaking with you guys very frankly here because it's it's gotten to that point. It's it's gotten to that point. You need to hear what I have to say. Um all of my ex-military guys out there, look, chime in. Let me know, you know, what your opinion on this. It's a little different in the military, you know, because I have a friend, Jacob. He's uh he was a former Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine, I know, but he's a former Marine. And he was telling me about some of the guys that he was leading and they were like, they got out of shape and they got fat. Like he couldn't do much about it because of this and that. I get it. It happens in the military too, but like in the military, everybody's supposed to at least have this standard, right? Like you all went through basic training and this and that, and like you all are on that level at least, but with the militias and with the other, other things like one shepherd, you don't know what the fuck anybody's been through. You don't know if they're lying unless you have a good bullshit detector. Like you just like it's a whole mix match of like people from civilian life everywhere. And you have to come together and work as a military unit. And it's, that's dangerous. And that's why militias have the, the reputation that they do. But again, if you take your job seriously, your position as a citizen warrior seriously, you should be taking it seriously. I do. And I expect that you do as well if I see you out there. Anyways, I hope that helped, and I hope that some of you guys got something out of that. Go and check out GoToFightingSecrets.com. I mentioned that you should have hand-to-hand -hand combat experience. Buy one of our um, direct download programs. It's a great start. It's military stuff. It's for when you find yourself shit out of luck, like your rifle, whatever, right? I've been in positions where, like, fuck, I go to pull the trigger. I'm, like, 10, 15 feet away from a guy click and no bang. I don't have enough time. I know that my other fucking mag is buttoned up in my mag pouch. I literally don't have time. I, you know, fuck. All right. I'm going in. Right. Um, <laughs> and that was in training. So I didn't get to beat them with my rifle or anything, but I closed distance rapidly. Right. So you need to know that in real situations, you're going to need to sometimes be in that unfortunate situation where like, oh, fuck, click, no bang. Fuck, I don't have time. I'm going in and I'm going to have to do what I have to do with my rifle or with my hands or with my knife. And that's how it goes. Sometimes you go through a door, somebody grabs your rifle. Fuck, do I have a sidearm? Can I get it? Uh, do I have a knife? Like, what do I have? Fuck, I am. Now I have to fight. I will teach you how to do that on gutterfightingsecrets.com. Direct downloads, they're under the hand-to-hand -hand combat training tab. So check it out. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you next time. Stay safe, warriors. Cheers.